Flashback 5.10 Resistance Reclaiming Inheritance in the Pub The office door flung open. Two cultists dashed inside, shoving Bob to the ground and Katie off to the side. Deputy Taylor and I were caught off guard as we were focused on unloading the safe's contents into our backpacks. Bob was knocked prone onto his back. The cultist was on top of Bob, pinning him down, and he had a wicked curved stiletto knife at Bob's throat. Help! Help! Bob screamed. His pistol had been knocked from his hand far beyond his reach. He flailed, trying to find his bowie knife at his side, but he could not find it. As he floundered, his hand, like a fish out of water, could find nothing. Bob was not in control. Katie had been shoved and hit, like Bob, but unlike Bob, was able to stay on her feet. She managed to dodge, like jujitsu, so the cultists mostly missed her and fell to the floor, into the exploded desk shrapnel and shards. While Katie's cultist was recovering from falling into that shrapnel, she saw Bob about to be killed. God save me, forgive me exclaimed Katie as she squeezed the trigger of her Walther 9mm pistol once, pause, twice, three times. The cultist slumped, seemingly lifeless, with three bullet holes in his back. Katie struggled to process what had happened, what was happening. Katie looked horrified. Her stomach was pitted. She had betrayed the Ten Commandments. She had betrayed God and Jesus. Katie, in that moment, wondered if she had fallen too far from God and her faith. Katie was paralyzed in thought and in horror. She stood there, holding her wall for 9mm, as if she, ready to fire more rounds at the deceased cultist, were he to rise again. Bob rolled to the side, freeing himself from the collapsed cultist, with blood flowing everywhere. He grabbed his dropped gun, and he aimed it straight at the cultist that had fallen on the exploded desk. Pop, pop! Bob fired two shots from his Glock 40 into the desk fallen cultist. The cultist had regained his footing and had his pistol out, and he was training its sights on Katie. Katie's assailant fell onto the desk shrapnel, bloodied, dead. Bob and Katie had saved each other's lives within seconds of each other. I could see both Bob and Katie were in shock. They were mortified that they had just taken a life, each of them. Each of them had killed someone. Deputy Taylor seized the moment. No time to feel bad. Feelings get you killed. Bury your feelings. We need to move. Now. Stick with the plan. But Katie and Bob could not move out. They could not stick with the plan. They were in psychological shock. Recognizing Katie and Bob were frozen in combat, Soldier Taylor barked, Killing is not murder for God. It is not murder for soldiers. It is not murder for war. It is not murder for knights. Move! Remember what Richard said. There is no hell for the righteous, she declared. Taylor's words did not break Katie or Bob's frozen state. I ran up to them and grabbed Bob and pushed him towards the door. I grabbed Katie by the wrist and dragged her towards the door. Taylor moved in front of us and peered out the doorway. She said, all clear, move. Taylor growled and grumbled, dang it. She grabbed Bob's arm with her left hand and held her Glock in her right hand. Let's go, Bob. You're with me. I got you. She reassured him. I copycatted Deputy's words for Katie. Katie, I got you. You're with me. Let's go. 